we're going to share a secret with you about how you can fill your garden with plants free. Preppers, I'm Kylene and I'm Jonathan and today we're going to talk about filling your garden with plants. It's springtime and it's time to get out in that garden. It's time to make your garden successful so that you can have a great bountiful harvest. We hope that you're going to join us and do your own victory garden this year and you don't have to be a crazy plant lady like my <laughs> wife for you to have great success and to be able to do this relatively inexpensively. It's true. So today I'm going to share with you one of my great secrets because I've always had to live on a very small budget. Huge family, just a little bit of money. So sometimes I have to be a little bit creative. And one of the things that I found out is that the network of backyard gardeners are some of the most generous sharing people around. So if you if you want plants, all you have to do is find a backyard gardener like me who has spring starts. And in this video, I'm going to show you how I'm going to divide some of my starts. I have a friend that's in a neighboring town and today I'm going to dig up some goji berry starts and some comfrey and take to her and in exchange she has some walnut tree starts and some blackberry starts for me and I'm so excited but this is just one of the ways that gardeners work because if you don't divide your plants um, then they get too big for themselves and, and it doesn't work out well and if we share then we can have it all over our community and it's free so come on take a little pencil and paper and join us as I show you how I divide some of these starts before I get started on dividing the plants, one of the things I wanted to just make sure that I mentioned is starting your own seedlings. And as a gardener, I way plant more seedlings than what I need for the year. And so I have some that I will be sharing with all of my friends. But I use these little solo cups because I can get them really cheap in a giant bag from Costco. And then John drills little holes in the bottom. But I, these aren't one time use. I'll use these over and over again. And you can see that, um, some of these have names scratched out on them that I use over and over again. When I need to buy some of the bigger plants, if I buy them already um, planted and ready from a nursery, it costs more. So some of these, like these down here, I bought them just the little bare root things. These actually came from Sam's Club. And then I pot them like this, let them grow, and then I pot them out in my garden. It's just another way to save money. But you can have a lot of plants for one packet of seeds. Now my friend wants goji berries and there's two varieties that I'm going to share with her. Now if you look, these goji berries have grown right up through my garden and I don't want that um, in my garden bed. They, these are in that big hedge that's right behind here. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to clip them. We don't want to keep all the stuff that's on top because if we do, it's gonna overwhelm the roots. And then I've got a few things planted in here that I want to be careful of and some weeds, but I'm just going to dig this up just like this. Now I'm going to keep as much of the roots intact as I can. You don't have to, but because I'm going to take these up to her today, I'm just going to do that. The thing that's important is that these roots stay moist. Um, during transit until they're planted, right? We don't want them to be um, waterlogged, but we don't want them to dry out. All right, let's go look at the other goji berries. These were the goji berries from Tibet that grow into this really tall hedge. Let's go look at the um, Phoenix Tears ones. These are Phoenix Tears goji berries and the big plants are just right over there, but they spread like crazy, which is a fabulous thing if you want food that is drought tolerant and will just keep growing. Um, the Phoenix Tears is the one that I really like. It's beautiful, right? But I'm going to cut all these down before I dig them because otherwise the top is going to overpower the roots. So I'll be right back. Okay, can you see how I took all the tops off of these? And now I'm just going to, 
This is all the root structure that it needs for the goji berry. And I'm gonna try and keep some of this soil with it, but I wanted to show that to you. So as long as she takes these and puts them in the ground and keeps them watered, that's huge, you've gotta keep them watered, then these should take off. And when I bought these plants, I paid 20 bucks a piece for them right when I first bought them. But now I can have as many as I want for free. Now these actually are patented, so you cannot sell Phoenix Tears goji berries um, because they're patented. Okay, now let's go and look at the comfrey. Comfrey is an amazing plant and it's one of, for me, one of the must-haves. But when you decide to put it somewhere, make sure that's where you're gonna keep it because it's gonna be there pretty much forever. But all of this stuff that was left from last year, this is fantastic compost and it regenerates the soil and it's super healthy as well as being a medicinal plant. Now to do comfrey, all I'm gonna do is lift it. Now I want to leave a lot of the soil here and not take it with me. But do you see how this is broken off? There is plenty, even though I pulled this up, there is plenty of the roots of this plant to go ahead and grow back. All right, and I'm just gonna pull these leaves off the top. And I'm gonna leave them right here in place because these are black raspberries. And right here, these are black raspberries. And this will definitely help to build this soil. So let's take this around and I'll show you how I divide it. Okay, now with the comfrey, I have an entire video on it. So click the card in the corner and it'll take you and show you the video and all the fantastic things about comfrey. But what I usually do is I just start with a shovel and I'll break it in half. And all you need is a piece of comfrey. Actually, you don't even need one this big. But usually I would say that's a really good start because that'll grow the plant very quickly. And then I just break these apart. You may want a knife, um, but who would resort to a knife? Okay, so I could break these into all kinds of smaller pieces and each would grow a new plant. Comfrey's super easy to divide and to replant and grow more. Now these are chives and they are amazing. It's early spring and see, they're already up and we can already eat them. They produce gorgeous flowers. They're great insectary in your garden, um, but they grow huge and so they need to be divided. Super easy to divide them. So you can just divide them in half. So they, when they grow, watch, and you can divide them in halves or quarters or whatever you want. See how they're all just kind of together like this? So when I break this apart, I can plant them just like this, just this one and it will grow. But I prefer to plant them as little clusters, but they all look like these little individual kind of onion. They're a chive, but they're just delicious and amazing and they're incredibly hardy and they'll grow like crazy. So this is definitely something that I want to divide every spring and share with my friends. My strawberry patch last year was pretty much made up of these two four by four beds. Um, and this was maybe three, four years old, but last year my strawberries were really small and it's because these were crowded. So I need to um, redo my bed, but that doesn't mean I have to buy all new strawberries. So let me show you what happens here. I've already replanted a lot of these, but I'm just gonna take one nice shovel full And I'm gonna leave most of this dirt, I'm gonna put it, or the soil, 
not really dirt, right? And what you see here are these little plants. We're gonna take it inside and I'm gonna show you how I trim it up to get them ready to replant again so that my strawberries will have a really long life. Let's go. Okay, this tray of strawberries, all I did was take a shovel and I kind of dug them up and shook off a little bit of the soil. So I've got this cluster and I'm just gonna gently break it apart, get rid of the weeds. Now, okay, I'm looking at this and here, I have a couple of them. I'm going to trim off anything that's old or dead. If, um, like, I might trim off some of this growth because I don't want the growth of the, um, I don't want the growth of the top to overpower my roots. So there, that's a beautiful new strawberry to be planted, right? And I'm just gonna keep going through here cutting off all of this stuff. Look, beautiful new strawberries. Then this is kind of a really good example of one that has just a lot of, it's getting a little bit older and we wanna make sure that we trim it up really nice. Here, this you can tell this one's pretty old because it has this really thick root. Hold on. I really wanna get it all nice and cleaned up. Do you see this thick root? Sometimes they'll be clear out here. And if my strawberry is like this, I'm going to want to cut this because I want a lot of, I want to encourage a lot of new growth and not have the old strawberries. Really old strawberries, you, you might want to not put in there. Can you see how I'm just kind of breaking it apart? Don't be afraid, don't be afraid you're gonna hurt them, right? Um, they're really resilient. Most berries, the better you prune them, the happier they're gonna be. Now look at this one. That is pretty intense. That's a, that's a nice, healthy one. Oops. Okay, do I care that that happened? Actually, no, because this crown is what's really important. So do you see this strawberry here? When I plant this, if you plant it too deep or too shallow, it's not gonna do well. You wanna plant it right here at the crown where you can see the tops coming up and then you've got all these roots. This is the perfect place to plant it. I thought I wasn't gonna show you anymore, but I think this is a really good example. Look at the root of this strawberry. Do you see how huge it is? This is a really old strawberry. And in order to give it new life, I'm really just gonna cut this root off. See how much I cut off? But what I wanna encourage is the new life. And this is a crown that I can split apart. Do you see how many roots are still there? It's got a really good um, root supply. And now I'm gonna cut all this dead stuff off the top. And Actually, I'm going to split this one one more time. And you can see now I've got these healthy new strawberries that are going to grow and enlarge my patch. So check this out. Out of that one small area, there was probably two shovelfuls that I took. Um, look at these. I've cut them all, trimmed them all down, cut off the extra on the top. Beautiful root systems, ready to be planted. And this is more than enough to do an entire four by four bed or um, quite a long row, actually. Do you see how easy it is to be able to dig these plants and separate them and share them with others without it costing you anything? So if you are an experienced gardener, will you take the challenge to reach out to some of those around you and just help them get started? Share some of your seeds or share some of your starts and help bless lives so that this year we can all have victory gardens and make sure that we're able to eat better. Um, and I've been reaching out to my friends recently and asking them because of our challenge, right? July through September, we've got to depend on what we're growing in our garden. And so bartering counts. So I've been asking them what kinds of foods I should grow that they would want to barter with me. Because I know I have a sweet friend that will trade me chocolate for kale, but I don't think everybody is that kind. So um, for the question of the day, 
what would you like me to grow in my garden if I were going to barter with you? Comment below. And thanks for being part of the solution.